What's going on, people? This is Lecrae. Hey, what's up, y'all? This is Kel Mitchell. Picky one is that would be me. <laughs> Yo, what's up, everybody? It's your boy, Brian Hooks. Hey, what's up, everybody? I'm Dr. Dorinda Clark Cole. Yo, what up, y'all? It's your boy, Kev, on stage. Yo, what's up? This is Doug E. Fresh. What up, what up? It's DJ Emmy for that Breakfast Club. What's up, everybody? It's Mr. Top Box. Hello there. This is Kim Burrell. Yo, what's up, everybody? This is Cardi Cortez. Well, hello there. I am Jaqueline Carr. Good afternoon. It's Jess with the mess. Hey, everyone. This is Faith Jesse. My name is Kid from Kid and Play. Peace to the planet. Charlemagne the God here. What's up, y'all? Las Vegas. It's Sad Entertainer. I want you to download and tune into the greatest gospel station in the Las Vegas area. It's the number one gospel station. Number one gospel station. Number one gospel radio. Check it out. I need you to do me a favor. I need you to go download Anointed Radio app. From either the Apple App Store or Google Play Store. For 24-7 gospel. Make sure to check out their website at anointedradionetwork.com. Music for the soul, music for your spirit, music to lift your heart. That soul food for your body, that energy for your spirit. Gospel in the morning, gospel for lunch, gospel at dinner, and then you go to sleep. You know what? Guess what? You're dreaming about some gospel. Sometimes these are the songs that really uplift us and uh, get us through some of the tough times. Salute Pastor J. Calhoun and Anointed Radio. Know your boy wouldn't steer you around. Go listen right now. You feel me? Check them out without no doubt because gospel is what it's all about. Hey, 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 everybody. This is Pastor Jay. And like always, we're going to start in normal fashion. Our normal fashion is this. We're going to start with a scripture and a prayer. The scripture we're coming out of is 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 12, where it says, fight the good fight of the faith. Take hold of eternal life to which you were called when you were made, where when you made your good confession in the presence of many witnesses. Being a Christian can be at times be hard, but always fight, always push forward, press, press closer, press forward to your faith. Because a lot of times when you're going through this life, it's hard. A lot of times we don't want to do things. There's a lot of things that come up. Adversity is always coming at you. I just encourage you to fight the good fight and to show that your faith faith is stable your faith is a solid ground for you and how you go forward because your faith will always show in your perseverance amen um dead father god we just thank you god we thank you god we praise you god we give you all the glory and all the praise we come before you humbly to to ask you to enter in let somebody be able to hear something that they need to hear tonight god God, we ask you to let us be able to reach new audiences, reach new people, reach new airwaves. God, we just ask you to just be able to spread out the word about Anointed Radio, God. God, let everybody under the sound of my voice be able to, to have a seed planted so that they can have a better relationship and improved relationship with you, an established relationship with you, so that they can be able to know who to turn to in those dark times, God. God, we just ask you to be able to let's teach the uh, teach the teach the unteachable, reach the unreachable, and to touch somebody even with the hardest heart, God, so that they can say, "What can I do to be saved?" We ask you to break chains, to be able to shake up households that have been shifted by the enemy, to be able to be a solid ground again, God. We ask you to be able to bond relationships that have been broken, God. We ask you right now that God, you will touch everybody that's under the sound of my voice to really sh be able to stand on your word and know your promises, so that that they could be able to go forth and do the things that you've called them to do in 2023 without having any falter. So, God, we just thank you. We glorify you. We give you all the glory and all the praise. And we say that all in Jesus' precious name. Amen. 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 This is Pastor Jay. And like always, 
You can follow me at Anointed Jalon on social media, on all social media platforms. You can catch me on the Facebook, on Instagram, Twitter, TikTok. You don't stop. And you can follow me on those clubhouse streets where I'm there only because Prophetess Tish tells me to come through. Amen. Giving her the credit when credit is due because I do not come to clubhouse. So, um, and if you want to check out any of my music, you can check my music out at Jesus, you make me happy, renew my praise, my team reps, Jesus, slip away, wake up, bless all those great things. Check out Pastor Jalon Calhoun on all those digital streaming platforms. And with that being said, before I bring up anybody, make sure you share, like, subscribe. If you are here, make sure that you download the Anointed Radio app for 24-hour gospel all day, every day. We're not just a station that plays for six to eight hours. We play every day something to be able to encourage you to go forward in God. So make sure you download the Anointed Radio app. Make sure that you um, follow us at LV Anointed Radio and check out our new website, anointedradio.com. We're moving slowly into our new website. We have a new email address where you can reach us at info at anointedradio.com. We're improving and going forward in this year. So make sure that you go follow all of those great things. Download the Roku app where we have the anointed radio uh, Roku app and you can watch good movies, this interview, next interviews, all kind of great things. So do my due diligence and go follow. So with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and bring up some of my co-hosts. we got Prophetess Tish. we got the lovely Miss Brittany Marley. We got everybody knows Miss Simi so real. And we have a few in absence, but it is okay. We're going to pray for them anyway. Eventually they're going to get here. So, where can they find you, ladies? Well, they can find me. I have a delay. I'm sorry. I'm Prophetess Tish. You can find me at fer- on Instagram at fervently.creations. You can find me in on Facebook at Tishier. Um, and you can find me, as Pastor Jay said, in them clubhouse streets as Prophetess Tish Shear and also on LinkedIn as Letitia Shear. But hey, please do not forget to uh, find me in Atlanta, Georgia, June 2nd, June 4th for the Prisoner of War in the Mind Conference with ambassador coach prophetess sophia ruffin along with a host of many others to include our very own pastor jay who will be singing uh, as well and it is part of our our uh our special musical appearances along with tasha uh no tasha page lockhart as well so hey please check us out june 2nd june 4th tickets are available at eventbrite amen go ahead simmy all right. <laughs> okay. I am Simi So Real. You can find me on Facebook as Simi So Real, S O R E A L. Also on Instagram and TikTok. I also have an event coming up January 21st, hosting uh, with God's Poet. That's her event, but I'll be hosting. It's called Bridge the Gap. It's going to be amazing. And also January 29th, I will be doing comedy. That's why Christian comedy for. Um, Pastor Roberson's birthday slash retirement at New Jerusalem. And you can catch me anytime, any place, usually with the community in the midst of the unity right here in Las Vegas. Amen. In the midst of the unity. All right. <laughs> What's up, y'all? I am Brittany Marley. You can find me on Instagram at I am Brittany Marley. Uh, you don't have to pay attention to my Twitter because I'm not even on there, really. Um, but you can also find me at Testimony Tuesday with Brittany and Kelly.blogspot.com every Tuesday, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We are in season four. Um, yeah, so check us out every Tuesday. And our show page on Instagram is at Revelation. 12 verse 11 amen we're gonna go ahead and uh bring up a quick topic and and talk about it amongst ourselves about titles i was at an event where someone was saying oh don't call me their title and it just brought up this topic where i wanted to talk about it does titles matter because i feel like a lot of times the shift in blame and shift accountability is always thrown to people with titles but people forget about that being you, you still got to be accountable to yourself. It doesn't matter about your title. It matters about you. So what do you guys think? 
titles. Do titles titles matter in 2023? Because nowadays everybody want to be a pastor. Everybody want to be a prophet. Everybody wants to be all these different titles. But does it really matter? What y'all think? Um, okay. Come on, Tom. <laughs> so I, this, this topic is always one that is interesting to me because it's kind of like that that double edge. We have a little technical difficulty today. I am. Oh, I think I think y'all both are. Okay. Oh yeah. wow, she's frozen. Yeah, I know. Right? She did. Can y'all hear me? I yeah, can hear. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so I always find this this topic kind of interesting because it's a thing to where people say, well, you know, oh, your title shouldn't, mer- uh, shouldn't matter, but like I'm currently going to school for my doctorate degree, right? Um, I worked hard for that title. Um, it, it's a lot of, it was a lot of time taken away from my kids, taken away from my family, taken away from my husband, taken away from, from, um, just doing personal things. So I did, I worked hard for the, for this same thing in the military. You know, a lot of us, we work hard for our rank. And, and so we go kind of off of those titles. Uh, but it's the same thing for your doctor. You don't go in there and just start referring to your doctor by their first name. You still call them by their, by, by doctor, whoever, you know, Dr. Nelson or, or whatever. Um, but, you know, so in a sense, yes, but it, to the point to where people let it get to their head, no. But at the same time, I still feel like it's still some respect and honor that should go there. You're not fixing to look at, at Bishop T.D. Jackson like, hey, T.D., like, you know, like it's still something. And so I think some people honor and they value and they don't mind putting a, t- a title on those that they feel um, shows that character outside of it. I think the only time it becomes an issue or a problem is once you see someone with a title that does not match their character. Once you see someone saying, oh, I'm, I'm a, a, a prophet, and then you constantly hear them gossiping and stuff. Well, if you're a prophet and you're const- constantly gossiping, tell, telling people stuff, how is it that you're a, a prophet and God's supposed to reveal his secrets to you and you're going and telling everybody's secrets? So, so like your math ain't mathing right now. Um, and so it, it's, just, it's the same thing when it comes to, you know, uh, pastors and stuff like that. Are you at, what does your character say about you outside of it? So I think that's really once titles become a, a factor in it. But I can tell you that I went through hell and high water for the anointing that's upon my life. I can tell you that I've been through some things and that the enemy came at me at a young age. And so, yes, at, do I have the, the title of evangelist and a prophet? Yeah, uh, yes. But at the same time, does it matter if someone calls me Tish? No, because I don't let it get to my head. But at the same time, I know just like I'm working hard for this doctor degree, just like I worked hard to be an NCO in the military, I worked hard. I, I, I went through some stuff for the anointing that's on my life. And so that's kind of how I feel. I, 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 it's one of those, those irritation questions for me. I think for me, that's what I was going to ask you, but you kind of answered it because to, for me, it's kind of the attitude that goes behind it. Um, like you said, going to your head. So I was going to ask you like, um, yes, you are, you honor your, the titles that you have or whatever, the titles that God has given you profit. Um, my question was going to be, so if somebody called you Tish, not trying to be disrespectful, yeah. um, is it, is it like a rah, rah moment? <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Like with some respect to my name, I'm a prophet. Do you get what I'm saying? Because some people are like that because I can walk Thanks. with somebody and not intentionally be disrespectful. You're a pastor, yeah. you're a prophet, you are a bishop. You know what I'm saying? I feel like, yes, T.D. Jakes, Bishop T.D. Jakes is well known um, as a bishop. But if I were to walk up to you and just, you know, T.D. Jakes or whatever, because you're a man, I'm a woman, we're all human or whatever, just out of my mouth it came. I don't feel like you should feel like I disrespected you because I didn't say bishop. I don't feel like you should get all whatever because I didn't say bishop. It's the attitude behind it. And I'm very... I'm a very simple person. <laughs> I say it that all the time. For me, I'm going to respect you. I'm going to call you what you want to be called or whatever. It's not a big deal to me if I had this title. If you didn't say that, if you just call me Brittany, some people call me Brit. I don't care. <laughs> like, my name is Brittany. That's the name that my mom gave you. Yes, if it's a title on it, you can say it or I can leave it. You know what I mean? Um, to me, y'all know I'm a Jesus freak. <laughs> Everybody on here knows I'm a Jesus freak. So to me, in my mind, there's really only one title that matters to me. I'm very simple. And that is a child of God. And that's not being whatever. I'm just very simple like that. (laughs) So that's me. 
I love that. Yeah, I love it. And I do. I want to piggyback on what uh, Prophetess Tish said. I do um, think that when you have worked hard for those titles, that you should be those titles should be acknowledged. And not only should the character match whatever the title is, but the work should match the title. And the Bible says in 2 Timothy 4 and 5, it says, do the work of an evangelist, make full proof of your ministry. And we talk about full proof, you're talking about that's synonymous with believing, knowing, persuading, and proof. There's evidence. So a lot of times when there's a discrepancy or there's an issue with titles, it's because you're calling yourself a pastor, you're calling yourself a prophet, you're calling yourself a woman or man of God or whatever, and your character and your work does not line up with your title. And then that's when the math isn't mathing, as Prophetess Tish said. That's when the math isn't mathing. So, um, you know, the Bible also says the first will be last and the last shall be first. Anybody that has a title, the greatest thing that you can do is first be a servant. You know, we lead by example. You don't just lead because you're in the front. You could go, you can be in the front and people not follow you. You could be in the front and, and not have a spirit of influence because nobody wants to hear what you have to say. But a leader is one just like Jesus was in that we knew he was Christ. We knew he was the Messiah, but he didn't just say it. There was proof. He showed it. He demonstrated. He persuaded us by the way he loved us and the things he did. And so as long as your title matched your character and matched the work, there shouldn't be a problem. And then there's a time and a place. There's a time to call me uh, Simi. It's a time to call her Tish. It's a call, time to call Brit Brit. And it's time to call you Jay. But there's also a time to say pastor, sister, minister, prophetess, doctor. There's a time and a place for that. And as mature people, we should know the time and the place. You know, because again, if someone's worked for that, you can acknowledge them. It's not, it's not being asking too much. They put the work in then you could take the time to acknowledge it and acknowledge it in the appropriate setting. I don't want to be called semi so real when I'm in a certain setting. I want to be called minister or so-and-so because I don't want people, oh, she going to crack a joke or that. I do mm -hmm. love to crack a good joke, but it's a time to play. It's a time to laugh. And it's a time to refrain from laughing. The court book, the book of time, Ecclesiastes is a time for everything. So it's mm -hmm. also a time to acknowledge the title, you know. Yeah, I agree with all of that. I agree with all of that too. It is it's no problem with acknowledging the hard work that somebody put in. But I'm if if somebody doesn't by mistake, the attitude right. still needs right. to be right. <laughs> and, I, and the character be like, like, it's okay, girl. You know, it's and all I, right. I feel like sometimes people because you, you shouldn't have to I, I've seen people bite people's heads off. I've 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 seen it. And I, I could say probably there's only one time and I felt like it it was being like shaded where I'm just had to throw throw that okay you you keep putting me at this level and I'm not at that level because it's just kind of like when we're in certain settings it's kind of some people will throw throw kind of shade out there It'd be like all right I play around a lot I know I do but when it's like what Simi said when it's a time to be serious and it's talking about especially ministry um, that is when you will probably get the most serious Pastor Jay. I think I get more irritated be calling Jalen than calling in pastor. I don't really trip about somebody calling me a pastor. I know what my title is. I get hate. I get mad, and I've been dealing with this for thirty something years. That somebody calling me Jalen, where they put an E in my name. I'm like, where does this E come from in I my name? I like everybody in their mama <laughs> called me Jalen. And I swear I ain't never been named Jalen a day in my life, but I didn't fault that. I I think I have an issue with that more than a title. You call me brother Jay all you want to. I'm like, okay, I'm I am your brother in Christ. But Jalen, though, like I didn't perform. Then they be like, we got Pastor Jalen. I'm like, uh, I'm not going out. Nope. <laughs> No. Oh, yeah, yeah, I, <laughs> I was in my feelings with that. Yeah, I'm not going to nobody. I was like, no, I'm not going out. Who is Jalen? He ain't here. I, I, where does this E come from? They just love adding that E, but yeah, that was it. I just wanted to kind of vent on that. I get my little venting moment in. So, <laughs> okay, don't call me Jalen. Like, man, where does E come from? Like, I know you could buy a vowel, but don't buy the E, buy the O, because that's in my name. Just throw that out there. So with that being said, um, we're going to go ahead and bring up our guest.
and our guest is a singer a woman of god she is doing she's a book author she's doing a lot of great things in the ministry and i let her better say it herself and where she could be fine miss christy b everybody hello hello welcome thanks so much for having me tonight no problem. So where can everybody find you? Where, like, Where's all your social media handles, your website, all that good stuff? So on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, and Twitter, the handle is at the Christy B. I'm also on YouTube and the channel is called at the Christy B as well. Um, and they could also find me at my website, which is www.thechristyb with two E's like a bumblebee.com. That's dope that you're so easily accessible because some people are like, so I'm, I'm, I'm Christy B over here. I'm, I'm, I'm Dub B on the other side. I'm, I'm Christy on this side. And they be like, okay, where's all this stuff I can look up? <laughs> I need so, consistency. That's, that's actually a great thing. I, one thing I could definitely say to everybody about marketing yourself is that you have to be easily accessible so that people can find you. And you just showed a perfect example of having everything synchronized. So that when they search you, you're easily found. That's dope. So um, with that, we're going to go and hand it over to Miss Brittany Marley with the Icebreaker Game. All right, y'all. This is This or That. We, I feel like we haven't played This or That in a while. But this is This or That Childhood Edition. So let's just take it back. Rewind it a little bit. Think like a child, not yourself today. Okay? okay. <laughs> so here we go. First one. Skating rink or the bowling alley? Skating. Skating. What about the, you? The bowling alley. Bowling alley. Pastor Jay, I, you playing today? I, I, I'll do. I'll do bowling alley. Okay. All right. Hot dogs or hamburgers? Hamburgers. Plant, oh, a hamburger. Plant-based um hamburgers. As a kid. That didn't that that didn't exist back then. As a kid, <laughs> we are in our childhood today. <laughs> okay, hold on. Let me, a cheeseburger. Okay. <laughs> She's <laughs> <on> plant based. <laughs> She's plant based. Just to scratch that from the record. <laughs> what about y'all? For me, it'd be a hot dog as a kid. All right. Um, sleep over at a friend's house, or have the friend come sleep over at your house. Nope, at a friend's house. I'm trying to get out. Everybody's kids. I'm, I'm trying to go to somebody else's house. They, they, you know, other parents are nicer to you than your parents. So you could get away with a lot more other people's house than what you can at your house. So I'm, I'm, I'm gone. My mom didn't care whose child it was. Anybody could get it? <laughs> yeah, everybody. Hey, her hands was rated E. Her, the belt was rated E. Everybody got it. Mm, mm. All right. Uh, Pop-Tarts or cereal? Cereal. Cereal. I'm trying to find the pastries. Where's the Pop Tarts around here? <laughs> S'mores or Rice Krispies? Or Rice Krispie Treats, I mean. Mm -hmm. Rice Krispie Treats. Rice Krispie Treats. Yeah, yeah Rice Krispie Treats. Homemade. 100 Rice Krispie Treats. Uh, Kit Kat or Reese's? Reese's. Reese's. I just had four of them before the show. Oh, wow. <laughs> All right. Bologna sandwich or grilled cheese? Grilled cheese. Fried bologna sandwich burnt in the little slit in the side. That, that's how you put that. <laughs> Listen. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right. Dry cereal or with milk? Oh, definitely with milk. Milk. Dry cereal. I ate it dry. I don't, I don't, I'm not a fan. Gotta have the milk. And then when the flavor is all up in there, just take the bowl and just sip it up and do the, the flavor it. in the milk. That, that part. Is nauseating to me when people mm -hmm. do that. <laughs> it's just, I'm not a milk fan, but uh, kickball or dodgeball? Kickball. Like in PE, think, you know, PE, what would you prefer? I'm hurt, I'm hurt, I'm hurt my big toe. I'm hurt my big toe because I'm going for the kickball. All right. Dodgeball. I'm trying to hit somebody in the head. Yeah, dodgeball. Yep. All right. Um, okay. Sleepover at your grandparents' house or at an aunt or uncle's? I'm going to grandma's house. My bloody house. 
grandma's hands. In and in and in and in. I'm watching the stories with my grandma too. Yep, sure enough. Right. I'm going to pass the day on that. The same thing because I'm about to watch Young and the Restless. You're going to see what old Vicky Newman doing. Mm-hmm. General Hospital, One Life to Live, All My Days children. of Our Life, All My <laughs> that Children. That was their story. <laughs> Jeopardy, <laughs> Hollywood Squares. Yep. All right. All, All the good there. shows with Grandma and Grandpa. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. One more for the group. And then the last one is going to be just for you, Christy B. Okay. All right. For the group, were you mom or dad? Which one did you prefer as a child? Neither. Okay. Dad yeah, went there. I had no choice. Okay. <laughs> mom. This is some childhood trauma right here for this game. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it was mom for me. Mom, gotcha. Yeah. All right, last one for Christy B. We're gonna move past that trauma because that was a lot. Um, if there's one thing you would tell the young your younger you, what would it be? It gets so much better. Hey man, I it like gets that. so much better, and it does, and it does. I like that. I like that, that too. And that is the end of this or that childhood edition. AKA the, the trauma addiction. <laughs> I didn't mean to bring up trauma. I, it just went neither. My dad wasn't there. <laughs> it's not right. I got somebody right now. I'm going to need a therapist. Yeah. Right. I'm going to radio. If you call in. We okay. just need a life coach to come in when people got mommy daddy issues okay. on the show. Amen. Shout so, out to my mom and dad. If y'all watching tonight, love you guys. <laughs> <laughs> There were, were facts. Hey, right. Mom. Right. Hey, Dad. Hey, Dad. We're cool now. Amen. Amen. Miss Christy better. B. Miss Christy better. B. Yes. Um, it gets better. I it like that. Let's, let's progress with that. It gets better. Um, let's first tell everybody, you know, reintroducing you to some and introducing you to others. Where is your hometown and where do you reside now? Born and raised Brooklyn, New York, and that's oh, where, where Brooklyn I'm Brooklyn at. Where yeah. Brooklyn at? Hey, hey. yeah, and that's where I currently live. Okay. okay, so what was your inspiration for music? Hmm, I think I started singing when I was really, really young, and I think music was always just an outlet for me and a way of escape. Um, and it also was a safe place for me to just pour out everything that was inside. I didn't have many of those outside of music and art. So I went to those outlets to get those things out. Mm -hmm. So with what you said in the icebreaker game, is that something that you felt like you, you kind of went and saw like, okay, with me harboring into my gifts and my talents, I saw that how it could be able to pro better progress in my life. Do you feel like that's accurate? Yes and no. I think being able to use my gifts was always something that I enjoyed because from a young age, I knew it was unto the Lord and it brought me joy to do that. But it really was getting closer to God that helped solidify Chris, it gets better. Like, he ain't going to leave you. He ain't going to forsake you. It's tough now, but he's taking you through and making you better because of it. Mm -hmm. So during those times, that's probably once a lot of your prayers was going through. And I had looked at your thing and you had said, in this season, I've begun to live out even more the prayers, um, the prayers I've been praying for the past decades over my life. So as you were saying, it gets better. That's what it reminded me of, of your post and how you're saying you're embracing the new. How, how does that look for you right now? Embracing the new with your declarations and actually walking into answered prayers. Yeah, so it's twofold. On one end, I am like one of the themes that I had for this year is fully partnering with God. I don't want to resist him not in a way of I'm living outside of his will, but sometimes the Lord can say, this is what I have for you. And us, because our eyes are not open to really see ourselves well, we're like, uh, really? Uh, mm -hmm. I'm going to tiptoe around that one. I'm not too sure about that one. Um, but I really feel the strength and the grace of God to partner with him completely and to show up authentically. And um, that wasn't something that I always felt comfortable doing just because 
I didn't receive that affirmation growing up. And I felt as if maybe it's not important for me to show up in this way. And so in this season, I have a lot, of, I, the Lord has opened new doors for me. I'm in a totally new position at work, a new church, um, new opportunities, new both ministerial and personal, new relationships. And rather than backing away, like, oh, this is just a lot of new. Like just last week, I started two new positions and I was like, oh, okay, in the same day? Okay, we got this, right? Um, instead of backing away, it's leaning into it because I trust that God's prepared me for it. And that who I show up as today is who those spaces need. Amen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I can relate to that so much. Catching up to who God is saying that you are and actually believing it and then making the choice to move in to who he says that you are. I, I relate to that. I'm curious so, what pushed you. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Pastor Jay. No, I was just going to ask simply about the minister part. Um, what would you say your season is as a minister? What, what would you say if you had a title, a sermon about your season that you're in right now, what would you call that? That's hard because there's so many. Because on one end, the way that the Lord deals with me, it's like he does 10 things at once. And I'm like, okay, crash course, gotcha. Mm -hmm. um, on one end, it's becoming. I feel like I'm becoming at an accelerated rate, but just in a beautiful way, leaning into who God says Christy is authentically. Um, but then on the other end, it is developing others and giving them vocabulary for the future they can have. I like that. That was deep. Go ahead, Simi. I love when you were saying you're um, fully partnering uh, with God. I just, I just love the way it's put so eloquently. Can you tell me what pushed you to that place where you say, now I'm going to fully partner. Was there an, an event that happened or a mindset or a shift that says, I want to, um, not that you're saying that I just been all out of his will and just, you know, but I want to fully partner with him. Yeah. It wasn't a particular event, but it was a mindset shift that happened because in my devotional time, I was realizing how, you know, father, I, I haven't, gone after everything with the energy that you want me to. Like I've shown up authentically, like being mm -hmm. an author and being a minister, I've chosen to um, say yes to what God has said for me to do in various seasons. And there's come so much fruit of that. Like people have been blessed, they've shared like, hey, you doing what you do is like, not just inspiring me to do what I do, but it is bringing me closer to the Lord. However, I, I was honest with God. I was like, I feel like I can, do more not per se like i'm doing more in the day but do more in how i show up and how i actually believe you with my actions and my confessions and how i show up in various spaces and so with that mindset shift it was like if i don't fully partner with you there's something that i'm not going to access in my mm -hmm. life within myself within you and i want it all i don't feel like i've suffered in vain like if i've if we're going to suffer, let's reap the benefits of the suffering. Let's gl be glorified. Um, let the Lord be glorified through us, but also let's partake in the glory that the scripture says we should partake in as we suffer with Christ. And so it just was that mindset shift that I've, I've been through too much to not reap the benefit of it all. Exactly. And moving in that space and choosing to say yes, what is the change that you feel and see like on the inside of you compared to before? It's this boldness that was always there, but it's a new type of boldness that no matter what others say and if they receive it or not, I'm going to stand 10 toes down in what God has said. Mm -hmm. And that's freeing. I mean, you're freeing me right now. <laughs> yeah. I'm back. So I, I listened to one of your, um, was on your Instagram page and you had a, a, a reel that I want to read real quick and just ask you to elaborate a little bit on it. I don't even know how much you can elaborate on it, but it says people can recognize your value and affirm it in word, but fail to support it in action. But those who truly value you will show it in how they treat you. 
2023 and beyond. Don't just settle for lip service. Stay and grow in places that show they value you and don't just say it. And so I, I looked at this and then listening to kind of what you're saying, it's kind of like it's show up for yourself, know how to show up for yourself, but also um, don't go where people are just settling for you or just tolerating you. Go where you're actually celebrated. Like, what was the thought process behind it? It was just so powerful. Um, so what was your, your thought process with this? Yeah, it's been years. Like, I've been learning this lesson over the past, I want to say, seven years. Um, mm -hmm. Based off of how I was raised and what I saw in the home, I thought that me loving others and loving the Lord was staying in toxicity, was um, accepting whatever people brought to you. And as I've been on a journey of healing, inner healing, deliverance, and just fully becoming, the Lord's actually reframed that. He's like, no, yes, you are to love. And there are going to be some seasons where I call you to stay in a place because you're a change agent. You're supposed to bring another aspect of my glory in that place, even if things are going topsy-turvy in that, that place right however because I love you I also want to connect you to people who reflect my love for you and so there are times where I stayed in relationships I stayed in churches in jobs that didn't honor the fullness of who I was that took advantage and just didn't create a space for me to show up authentically and what ended up happening was I acquired just so much trauma that I had to work through with the Lord. And it came to a point where the Lord was like, you know, you don't have to endure that. There will be seasons where I ask you to stay, but I want you to listen to my voice and really discern if it's what you learned from your childhood that's telling you to stay mm -hmm. or if it's my voice that's telling you to stay. Mm hmm. See, obligations to people, we feel like that is the Christian way, which a lot of times it's not. God didn't tell you that you should stay, but we feel like, you know, a lot of times I feel like we get that, uh, I'm trying to be their Jesus moment where we're stopping them from going to Jesus because we're always that scapegoat. We're always that way out for them so that they feel like um, they can just go to you. You're like, well, I ain't got to go to God to pray because you're going to bail me out. I ain't got to worry about this because you always take care of it. And then when you stop, then you act funny, you know, mm -hmm. and you, when you stop, then you're just like, well, you know, I'm not letting you drain me no more because at this moment, I need you to learn to stand on your own two feet because there's a lot of people that I've realized and God broke it down to me that have Christian codependency that they're really not a Christian. They really don't know what it means to be a Christian, but because of someone else, they are looking, talking and acting like a Christian, but they really don't know what it is to stand on their own two feet. And if that pastor, that grandma, that mama, that whatever that brought them to have that codependency on it, they would lose what to do. And God was saying, you need to cut that tie and let them come to me. So I, I definitely would say to what you said, which is important. I hope somebody out here is listening to this, is that sometimes you have to be able to get out of the toxic areas when you ain't been healed all the way, because you're going to get hurt more than if you if you just trying to be like, oh, I'm trying to save people. No, nah, I put money. They'll influence you more than what you can do if you're not in a healed spot. Because eventually, bitter, bitter, uh, you'll become bitter. You'll come resentment. You'll you have all these things. You'll start getting some type of way because you'll be like, man, this hurts. Because being in a relationship where it's, I don't care if it's friendship, family ship, whatever type of relationship you're in, being a one sided relationship gets draining, and it gets to a point where you're just like, I can't be the best me because I'm not getting to the levels of where I need to be in life because I'm not. I'm always worried about what you're doing. Or yeah. worried about helping you and and all this stuff, and I don't know where I went, why God brought that brought, brought up to me, but I really wanted to just somebody needed to hear it out there. Uh, somebody <laughs> obviously did, but I just wanted somebody to know it's time to cut the sever and okay. go to God directly. I know a lot of people got saved by Big Mama, and she's not here. And that's why a lot of people stop going to church. I know that there's a lot of people out there that they saw the pastor and because the pastor brought them in, but the pastor been shady lately. Uh, that's now why you don't want to deal with the church. But I can tell you about a man named Jesus. If you find him for yourself, 
All that stuff that you talked about be so minute because he could be able to show you the way you were supposed to go instead of the way that people wanted you to go. So, Miss Christy B., Yes. One thing I would say is, as a minister, what is your favorite scripture? Ooh, that's hard. That is so hard to answer. Because in every season, I've leaned on a different one. But I would say Philippians 1, 6 is the scripture that God has used to build in me an endurance. So being confident in this thing that he who has begun a good work in you shall complete it until the coming of Jesus Christ. Um, and that's actually what... One of the songs on my EP is based off of that scripture because it tells my story of feeling there were often times that I felt just so discouraged. Like there is no hope. Like I keep showing up in this space in a way that doesn't reflect who I truly am or others keep treating me in a way that doesn't reflect how God says I should be treated or how I would want to be treated. But the Lord always used Philippians 1, 6 to encourage me that this won't be for long. I'm healing you. I'm changing you. And this work's not going to be done until you see Jesus face to face. And that has always anchored me um, in this walk to not give up. Exactly. You took us right. You took me right into <laughs> what I was uh, wanted to ask you about your EP. Um, mm -hmm. So there are five tracks, including the title track. Um, there is more. And so you mentioned the scripture, Philippians 1, 6 for the song Beautiful. And I just kind of want you to go through the songs. Um, the last four, like You Are Mine was Isaiah 43, Secure Psalm 91, You Are Good, which... I really love that song. That is a beautiful song. And <laughs> that is based off Psalm, Psalms 145. And so I just kind of want you to take us through those songs kind of, because um, I know you just didn't choose those scriptures for creative purposes. They obviously, you can tell they obviously mean something to you and meant something to you in the time of writing those songs. So for You Are Mine, Isaiah 43, um, what was that for you? Yeah, Isaiah 43 um, I shared this at my EP release concert last year that um, I did not want to hear the Lord when he sang that over me. I was in a season that it was the toughest season of my life. Um, there were a lot of things going on in my family. Um, I have a broken relationship with my father and how he was showing up to me and everyone else in that season. It just was very traumatic and just really hard to endure. Um, and so in the middle of the pandemic, I was homeless, I didn't have a job and being the person that God has used to be an intercessor in my family and in other people's lives, I felt let down by him. I was like, Lord, like I would have hoped you would have shielded me from this experience because I would have never expected to be here. Mm -hmm. um, and there was one day I was sleeping on, basically living with my best friend and her family temporarily and um, I had my guitar and God was just like, go to Isaiah 43. And I was like, oh, I don't really want to do that right now, but okay. Um, yeah. And I started strumming the guitar and I'm looking at the scripture and I hear heaven sing that over me. And so I record it. And in the moment, I was like, this is nice. However, I don't feel like I belong to you because I feel like if I did belong to you, you would have stopped this from happening. Like you would have protected me. Um, but Isaiah 43 tells a story of, well, it just shows God's heart to us, but it also for me is me receiving what God says about me. Like I belong to him, that no matter what goes on, even if like all hell has broken loose in my life, I belong to him. He sees me, he knows me by name. And because of that, I can trust that he's with me. Um, and then we have after that Psalm 91, secure and mm -hmm. Baby, when I tell you secure is what I've lived, um, it's what I've lived. I've encountered many hardships. Um, the enemy has risen up through people um, and just boldly in my life to try to break me down, to tr literally try to kill me. And in every experience, the Lord has reassured you're hidden in me. And because you're hidden in me, even if those weapons form, they're never going to prosper. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to carry you through. I, and so secure is like the anthem of me believing that and saying, yep, no matter what comes yep. because of who he is, it's nothing based off of my goodness. I didn't earn it. I didn't pray for it. It's not because I fasted and lived right before the Lord because all of that is but filthy rags, right? It's because of his goodness. And so secure is that anthem 
taking that on and believing that. And then we have your good. Your yes. good is like a song. Okay. Listen, <laughs> it is the final sentence of the EP because the title um, song is there is more and it's the prayer and it's what the Lord burdened me to pray through. And then at the end of the day, because God is good, I can believe there is more. And there, are seas there were seasons of my life where I didn't believe there was more. As a young girl, when I was struggling with um, depression and going after killing myself, right? I didn't believe that there was more. There were times of darkness throughout my journey of becoming that I had no hope, but I now stand flat-footed in the fact that because God is good, I trust wholeheartedly that there is more. Because God is good, I trust that he's gonna complete this work in me. Because God is good, I trust that when he says I belong to him, it's true. Because God is good, I can believe that no harm shall come to me, no matter what comes my way. Yes, and I think because I, I love that song. It's a beautiful song. And I think I gravitated towards that because I just had a conversation last night. Here you go, Pastor Jay, on a show called Sip and Chat. <laughs> you know, yeah. Brittany, she came out for it and got interviewed, y'all. I'm so proud of her. He didn't want me to mention that. I was not going to, but it's leading me to what I want to say to you. <laughs> so um, we are talking about faith, you know, and our struggle with faith. And what I wanted to say last night that just it slipped my mind in the conversation was I think we forget how good God is or we just say it. But it's like, do you really believe it? Because if you really believe it, like you were saying, because he is good, I can trust him with all of my life because he is good. I don't have to worry because he is good. I know he's never going to leave me. I think if we fall back on that which I feel like sometimes we forget to, I, I'll speak for myself. I know that he's good, but you do have to remind yourself that like God is not, I say it all the time on every platform. God is not setting you up to fail and all of these things. He's not trying to make you look stupid. He's not lying to you. If there's no tricks or games with him, that's the enemy's job. Yeah. God is truth. And so if you believe, like believe that God is good, then what, what really is the issue? The issue is because, Either you don't believe it or you're forgetting who he is. Um, so that song is beautiful. Love that song. And you. you just brought that back to my memory. I meant to say that last night on the um, interview. Yeah. And to so your point, I think often, I know I grew up in the church and growing up, if someone came to the mic, the first thing they would say is God is good and the church will respond all the time, right? Mm -hmm. It just became this routine mm -hmm. that we professed it, but often our hearts weren't in that, right? So that's one. And then two, I think our definition of good as humans is completely different from what God's definition of good is. Yeah. Because God can say something is good and then not feel good. Like mm -hmm. there are times where God was like, it's good for you to be separated from this person or from this place. And I'm like, that don't feel good. Like I love this person, right? This is my homie. Um, oftentimes, if because the scripture also says that his ways are higher than our ways. His mm -hmm. thoughts are not our thoughts. And so that scripture has also helped me in moments where I may not agree with a decision or agree with how the Lord is leading me. I'm like, all right, Christy, take humble yourself. There's something that you don't see that God knows. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, he's good, even when you don't understand. Exactly. So I have a question as someone that used to battle with anxiety and depression and including suicide, right? At one point, I had to stop and ask myself, what is it about me that the enemy wants to see me dead? Or what is it about me that he feels as though um, he has to find, he couldn't, after everything he's, I've been through, after all the hell I've been through, as you were saying in one of your affirmations, no, de no demon, um, what was it? No, no demon in hell can stop the good things God has for me. So as you was, as, as you're saying stuff like that, knowing that, okay, he's trying everything he can to stop you, but what is it about me? What is it about Christy B that the enemy wants to take me out that, that my very existence, that my very presence, if I walk into this newness, if I embrace this newness, if I embrace who God is calling me beyond, beyond a title, beyond what, what anybody else um, say about me, if I actually embrace who God says I am, my true identity in Christ, this is the reason why. What is that thing? Why does the enemy want to take you out? 
Yeah, that thought came later on in my journey. I struggled with um, depression and suicidal thoughts at the age of 11. And that was the age that I was actually actively um, trying to end my life. And having a face-to-face encounter with Jesus and experiencing his love is what stopped me um, and completely transformed me to the point of less than a year later, actually a couple months after the final attempt that I was getting baptized, like I was completely, it was a 180 change. I was not the same person, but as I journeyed on, I wasn't ever thinking about that. Um, But the Lord had that in mind because he's like, that's why I'm saying there's more because there's not just more to the life you're going to experience. It's not just about you having a great life, but there's more in you that has to come out. And it took years of pruning, years of crushing, years of um, following the Lord for me to stop and say, you know what, that's a good question to ask because I know I'm not going through all this for nothing. Like there's something about me when I wake up, hell is nervous. When I put my feet on the ground, there is something that the enemy is just like, oh no, she's awake again. And it came later on, I want to say like in my early twenties to mid twenties that I started like that light bulb switched on. And I was like, hold on, like we can't approach life. And that also ties into this um, journey of me leaning in more to what God says is realizing that the more is also more in me that has to come out because as scripture says in Romans 8, 19, the earth is waiting. It's groaning, waiting for the sons and daughters of God Mm -hmm. to be revealed. And so if Mm -hmm. I'm not fully stepping into who God says I am, there is an aspect of, um, there's a part of the earth that is lacking because what's in me is supposed to be an answer to the vacancies in the earth. Mm -hmm beautiful can you tell us a little bit about decided daughter i see you wearing a shirt (laughs) absolutely yeah decided daughter um it's my identity um i also have um the lord's gifted me with a ministry and a movement called the decided nation movement and it's comprised of decided daughters and decided sons and the whole premise of it is one that everything associated with our life day to day it boils down to our decisions. So what I choose to wear, what I eat, where I go, where I don't go, our decisions guide us. But one of the most important decisions is one, are you going to follow Jesus? Are you going to receive him as your Lord? But then two, as I've been living out, are you actually going to step into who he says you are? Because there are many who believe, but are there those who say, okay, now I believe, let me put my action to it. Let me step out and be the hands and feet of Jesus. Let me step out and go where he wants me to go. And so being a decided daughter is knowing that one, I belong to the Lord. Um, and you know, the strange relationship that I had with my earthly, that I have with my earthly father, it led me to just running into God's arms as he's Abba, like he is a good father to me. And so it's taking on that identity that I'm a daughter of the Lord, that he knows me, he loves me. and because I have that identity piece down pat, I now can tap into the authority he's given me and walk that out. That's deep. I like that. I'm going to have to get a shirt. Yeah. Sons and daughters. That's dope because it, a lot, everything is about your own choice. That's why even in Timothy, it says that we have the power of self-discipline and be able to choose what decisions and choices that we put in our life. Absolutely. One thing I, I want to say is, well, what's some upcoming projects, concerts, or anything that you have coming up soon? This year is filled with some surprises. Um, well, one is not a surprise. I announced it um, last year, but my family is from Haiti. And so the Lord put on my heart to um, to translate Secure into a Creole version. And so later on this year, that's going to be released. Um, and I have a goodie, a gift from the concert last year, the Lord gifted us with just an amazing engineer um, who captured the essence of that night. And so be on the lookout for a a surprise project this year. Amen. Okay. And so with translating, Mm -hmm. what's your most excited part about, about translating your song, Secure? It, although I was born and raised in America, um, I feel like I was born and raised in Haiti. (laughs) Well, Mm -hmm. one of the reasons being that my parents raised us as if they were living um, in Haiti. But 
I caught on to the language really quickly and really young. And so sometimes when I worship singing in Creole, worshiping in Creole, it hits differently. And it feels, I wouldn't say more authentic because it's still authentic when I'm worshiping in English, but it just feels so much closer to home. And so with translating, um, I was just so amazed by how the essence of the song wasn't lost. Because sometimes when you try to translate words and phrases don't match between English and other languages, but mm -hmm. with Secure, it's like, it's a perfect translation. And I really believe that for the Haitian people who may not understand or speak English, that it's going to be a gift to them to have that anthem. Mm -hmm. Hey, man. And, and to be able to, I think that's the reason why I asked that is because I think it's a blessing to be able to go outside the United States walls to be able to bring your song to have wings to different countries That's because it. then people start to catch on to it in their own language instead of have to kind of because you know when you hear certain songs from and you speak a different language um, you don't get the whole gist of it but when you have it in your language you're like wow I didn't even it hit like you said it hit different yes. and it hit harder at the same time when you can fully understand the grasp of the whole you know, project. So, um, amen. amen. Everybody, that's, this is Christy B, y'all, man. She, she on here, she, she, she came and brought a word. She talked about decided sons and daughters. I want a shirt. I'm like, I was serious about that. So and I, yeah. I got, cause that, that's a dope movement. And, um, one thing I would want to say is you've been on anointed radio. So I want to just say, thank you. Thank for coming you. on tonight and sharing your story, sharing your testimony, all the great things that you're doing. Um, like I always tell people, I'll be putting your music in rotation on the Anointed Radio Network. And one thing that I would want to say to you is just keep smiling. Thank you. Because 2023, it's new, but it still has some challenges on it. So don't forget the smile of today is going to be the, still that same smile of tomorrow. Mm -hmm. So, um, man, I'm trying to think of other stuff. We, we, man, we got, we got love for you here at Anointed Radio and we're here to support <laughs> you. That's, a, that's where I close out with that. Definitely um, have gained a fan in me for sure. Right. Thank you so sure. much. I love that she was talking about uh, if she's going to translate her song. Do you see yourself going back there to perform or to do ministry? Yeah, absolutely. I had a wonderful experience of going to several missions trips back in 2014. And it was there that it was solidified for me that I have a connection here that is God ordained. It's not just because I'm part okay. of those people, but there's something here that the Lord wants me to do. So I really look forward to the Lord letting me know the when and the how. Um, right now, things are difficult in the nation with traveling there. Um, yes. But I do believe that a change is coming so that the power and glory of God can meet those people as well. Okay. Mm -hmm. Amen. So one, one thing I would say is... What would be your last word of advice for someone? What let God use you in this? What would be your your encouragement that you would want to leave with everybody before we close out? That's a good question. I think what the prayer says has been the message that has been reiterated over and over in conversations that I've had with people. There's more. Um, especially after the years of the pandemic. I know a lot of people were just sitting at the edge of their beds waiting for the Lord to return. And while we are in that season of um, what Matthew 24 tells us, the end days, the time before the end would look like, God still has a plan for this time. Um, the earth is still waiting for the sons and daughters to rise up. So don't give up hope just yet. Partner with the Lord, lean into what he has and trust that he's good and that decisions, the decisions that he makes concerning you, although you may not understand them, although they may not feel good, although you may feel confused by them, at the end of the day, the scripture says he takes all things and works them together. I've lived it. I've seen it in my life and other people's lives. He will do that. It won't happen on your timing, but I'm here to promise you that he will do that. Amen. Amen. 
Amen. And with that being said, make sure you follow us at all social media platforms at LV Anointed Radio. Follow us on all the podcast platforms. We're on everything but title and follow us on Roku. Download the Anointed Radio app and want to everybody to know that we'll see y'all next week. Bye, everybody. Peace. Bye. <laughs>